Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we are going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Defender Kelly who is going to be coming to RTS as an advanced token will recruit. Now we have had a Kelly in the Mythic era before and it was a silver character so it is another silver character getting the Gold Mythic treatment. On the right hand side you can see visually this time around here is going to be a tough character with non-attached weapon by the looks of things we'll look at that a little bit later on in the video but he's got a lot of uh, gear on him he's got grenades and stuff on the left hand side i'm not so sure what's going on here i guess there's going to be some people who know the law behind this when it comes to the walking dead um kind of comic obviously it's kelly and it looks like he's having a kind of altercation with andrea i assume this is andrea if anyone does know the details on this feel free to let me know down below in the comments but visually otherwise he looks pretty cool he's got like a machete on his back and um, there's no nods to his silver version who was a strong version an actual pretty cool character way back when if we look at the actual stats and so on and so forth on kelly you can see at level 1600 limit break three he has got 18,715 attack 28,073 defense but he has a massive 46,789 hp he is going to be a tough character, as you see on the right-hand side. He is going to be of the medic role, God Mythic, of course, and he's going to be joining the Armory Allegiance. Now, the first thing we're going to take a look at is going to be the Adrenaline Rush, and it is called Reassurance. It has got a recharge rate of 55 AP, which is kind of standard for a defense team. Remove heal reduction from all Armory Allegiance teammates and two other teammates. Remove attack up from a line of enemies deal 15% of this fighter's max HP plus 5% for each other Armory Allegiance teammate as damage to a single enemy. This is pretty nice. It's like the support style when it comes to removing a, you know, the actual heal reduction. It would generally be 100% heal reduction, but this could be any level of heal reduction. Um, but obviously 100% is the best to remove just because it's the worst to deal with it, as it works also as a kind of periodic decap. If someone's got 100% heal reduction and they're taken out for let's say two turns the next two turns they can't actually be revived so he's going to be able to remove that I'll try and check out to see if he can remove that from people on the floor that will be pretty difficult to do but I'll see if I can do that um, remove attack up from a line of enemies this is obviously nice just removing attack from enemies is good there are characters that don't periodically buff their team they only do it once in a fight so removing buffs is actually a pretty big deal um deal 15 percent of this fighter's max hp plus five percent for each other armory allegiance teammate i think there's two other armory allegiance teammates right now i think it's magna and yumiko i think those are the only two and obviously yumiko was in war champion so obviously a lot harder to come by but um, there's no doubt going to be more armory characters coming out and I guess they would be more defensive because they seem to be making a defense team as Magna is a defense leader. I mean, it's only to a single target. It would obviously hit that target and then that line of enemies would have their attack removed. Let's see if we can check this out and I'll try my best to test out the whole does it work when it characters on the floor um, when it comes to a 100% heal reduction. Okay, as you can see, we have got 100% heal reduction on someone who has been taken out. I will try and remove that heal reduction with the Adrenaline Rush of um, Kelly here. And I can target a, you know, a character to do a little bit of damage as well. And it looks like it can remove the heal reduction off of the person to the floor. And it doesn't even prioritize people who are alive. So that's actually good, actually pretty good. Um, that means that character can get revived on the next turn. So if I do my defend actions, we'll see a revive come in from Mighty Hunter Zachary's um, passive, which is obviously quite nice, where he'll pick up the character um, and they'll just be alive. Pretty much as simple as that. And I think there are some other revives in the armory team. I'm, I can't 100% remember. There we go. There's the revive. It was a five star, but they're the easiest ones to take out and AI, whatever, for whatever reason wants to actually target them um, but you saw the 100 heal reduction get removed and the targets back up on their feet jumping straight into the upgrades you can see at grade two it gets plus five percent damage so it goes from 10 percent of his max hp to 15 percent of his max hp to a single target this obviously can scale higher because of the other part of it which comes in later as we look at grade four where he gets an upgrade where he removes heal reduction from two other teammates so initially the 
actual removal of heal reduction is going to be just from um, his armory allegiance teammates. But because that's at grade 4, it's very early, only one copy required. Then it'll be one. He gets not grade where he removes the attack up from a line of enemies. And this is just a nice little bonus. Stops someone from having like 100% you know, attack potentially. Um, counters on a roll because it can reset on a roll. It counters aggro, uh, at least the, the, the attack buff of aggro, not the defense buff. And then if we look at the last buff here, you can see at limit break three, it gets an upgrade where it gets plus 5% damage for each other army allegiance teammate. Now, I didn't show this in the clip. It was more about the hill reduction removal. I think scaling on HP, max HP is very easy to understand. The higher HP he has, the more damage he's going to do. It's pretty much as simple as that. If he's got 200,000 HP and he's got two armory teammates, he should be doing 25% of that 200,000. Um, and it says other armory allegiance teammates, so he shouldn't count for that. Probably want to get his HP up to over 120k, 130k, because if you only had him, 15%. It's only going to be about you know 15k if he's only at 100,000. You want to try and get it to the 20 to 25,000 um, damage range, and that'll be better. His base HP is massive; it's 50k. So the scaling on combat mods, on weapon buffs, on leader buffs, all of that combined should be a big output in terms of in a final max HP, which is what it scales off: max HP, not current HP. So the Adrenaline Rush is okay. It, it, it's kind of nice. It's, it's more of a cleanse and stuff like that. Um, he is a medic, so and there's no like healer stuff here. We'll see if there's any healer stuff in the rest of his kit, but this isn't too bad, and there's just a bit of damage on top as well. Now, moving on to the Synergy move, this is where we are going to get some healing, as it is called Disarming Resurgence. It has got an initial cooldown of turn one, cooldown of one turn, number of uses unlimited. Heal all teammates for 40% of their max HP. Apply attack up lock to a line of enemies for two turns. 75% chance to disarm those enemies for two turns. So this is not too bad in terms of the heal. It will be constant. Effectively, every other turn, he'll just heal all his teammates 40% of their max HP. And any of that healing done should go into bonus HP as well due to Defender Kelly's passive. If you do have a character on the team that has overheal, that would be a really good team up with Defender Kelly because he can do this off of turn one and he just gives a 40% heal. Should be a bit of bonus HP going everywhere at that point. Um, attack up block, again, is nice. If they've already got attack on them, this doesn't really do anything. It stops them being rebuffed, though, from things like um, turn weapons, turn-based weapons. So if they get buffed by a strong attacks weapon or an improved strong attacks weapon or so on and so forth, that's not going to be able to proc. But if they've got like a four-turn attack buff, that will always be there. It's just the way it is. Um, and then the 75% chance to disarm those enemies as well. That would be the third slot disarm. It is okay, I guess. Majority of the third slots are not, like, amazing. A lot of the time it's uh, four slots, 15, 35, so which can't actually be disarmed if, they, if there was any possibility because it, it isn't a, an attack effect. It's just a straight-up buff before the fight, so they couldn't get disarmed anyway. Uh, but this would stop things like double attack or... Um, Bonus attack based on enemies' HP, this sort of thing. And he's primarily, Kelly's going to be a defense team character, so those characters would be having their, like, attack bonuses removed. And this is just to slow down your potential damage output and hopefully make it harder for you to actually do damage, especially things like attack upload in there as well. Okay, so here we are with Kelly's signature move. I'm going to defend with my Kelly off turn one, and you're going to see the Kelly on defense do their signature move. And what should happen is a couple of my characters should have attack up block applied, but their characters should all get healed up. There is a little bit of HP missing on Molly, and there's some bonus HP missing on three characters. We have got an overheal character, so it should prop the overheal, and there should be some bonus HP that gets sent out. And we'll see if the bonus HP comes in. Not too much, just a little bit of bonus HP. And then if I used my signature move, you can see I can potentially do the same where I do the attack up block. We did not disarm, and they did... Oh, actually, I got disarmed. You can see that um, my character in the top left-hand corner, Glenn, did get disarmed for two turns. So that's the potential when it comes to the uh, signature move as well. But it isn't a 100% chance to disarm. Jump here straight into the upgrades on the signature move. You can see at grade three, it gets an upgrade where it applies attack up block to a line of enemies for two turns. So initially, it isn't doing that. Then at grade five, it gets minus one to starting cooldown and minus one to cooldown. So it goes from a two turn starting cooldown and a two turn cooldown down to a one turn starting cooldown. 
and a one turn cooldown. That's obviously quite nice. And then at LB2, he gets an upgrade where there's 75% chance to disarm a line of enemies for two turns. And as you saw, it did only hit one of those characters. Maybe one of them somehow um, resisted it. I'm not sure if Laura has resist to disarm in her kit. Um, but it could potentially be separated chance as well. It generally doesn't work that way. But that's how the century works. It's pretty basic. He's just going to be healing, doing a lot of heals. 40%. Doesn't seem like a lot, but that could be like 40, 50, 60k HP heals to everyone in the team. And he's doing it very regularly. You know, we have had 40% heals to everyone in the team before, but that's been on like Herschel's six turn cooldown signature move. This is on a one turn cooldown, so it's going to be happening non stop. And it also means that he obviously gets 35 AP at the same time, and then we'll get closer to doing his adrenaline rush from doing this as well. It's pretty much as simple as that. Now going over Defender Kelly's mythic abilities, his passive skills, he is of course a medic character, medic role, so he's going to have the spirit passive where 20% of all healing performed by this fighter also granted his bonus HP. This is only actually healing applied, so if someone is max HP it doesn't count, but if they actually get healed for 40% of their max HP then he should also give them 8% bonus HP if he does the full 40%. The next one's called Inspired Endurance. When Rejuvenate triggers, that is his brand new special skill, all other teammates get bonus HP equal to 25% of this fighter's max HP. That is actually pretty mad. I, I, I like that quite a lot, actually, the way it works. Um, obviously, his HP dictates how much that is going to be, but also his special skill proccing is going to happen quite regularly because of the way it works. It's actually very interesting. We'll see how that works later on in the video. He has got another passive called Survivor's Dexterity, where he has 80% Daze Resistance and 80% Impair Resistance. These are two of the best resistances to have on a defense team, for sure. Now moving on to the very last passive, it is called Determined Decoy. At the start of each turn, 60% chance with equal odds to either taunt a random enemy, taunt a random line of enemies, or taunt all enemies for one turn. Now, I will say I was doing the signature move test and the adrenaline rush test before, and I did have this proc a bunch of times where the entire team did get taunted off of turn one. Very, very brutal. It is only going to be at the start of each turn, though, not the wave. So it only happened once it goes to Kelly's turn. So when he's on a defense team, it will never pre fight, you know, before the fight starts, taunt enemies. But he will taunt enemies when it gets to turn two potentially and it could be the entire team so it could be pretty good he could actually work out as a pretty nice support character on an attack team as well it's just a real shame he doesn't have a revive in his kit if there was any way to get a revive in his kit maybe via a weapon um, that can just proc when attacked or something that could be really really good for kelly so if i start the fight you can see i have taunted one enemy on the defense team and what I'll do is I'll just hit the defend action and what we'll see is we'll see all the taunts that happen. So now the defense team Kelly's turn should take and he has taunted how many? Everybody. He's taunted everybody. Just not Clementine because Clementine is um, got 100% taunt resistance. My Kelly didn't taunt anybody because it is only a 60% chance. We'll just let this keep rolling. How many of my characters got taunted that time? This time it didn't. Oh, oh, okay. One enemy did. Now, my Kelly has taunted one as well. So, it's basically like every now and again, he'll you know, taunt somebody. But it could be up to the entire team. Quite a lot of randomness on that. And that is actually quite difficult to deal with. This time, it's been a line of enemies. And I have taunted one. I want to I wanna taunt the entire team. I want to taunt the entire team. Let's see. He taunted the entire team. I want to taunt the entire team. It looks like we've got at least one, maybe two enemies taunted at the top. I think I just taunted the entire team. I did. So what happens now is if I use my Adrenaline Rush, we're hitting a Guardian Shield. It doesn't matter. It's just to show the AP game from the taunted attacks. You can see the taunted attacks are going to come in. And I gain 30 AP off of this. And then I can do my signature move. And then I've got... a basically an adrenaline rush next turn this is where the ap turnaround could be really good obviously you have to get a little bit fortunate with how it goes you have to get i think probably at least two taunts off of turn one to realistically get enough ap to rush turn three uh, sorry to rush turn two but it's not impossible 
if you get an entire team taunt it's almost guaranteed unless there's an ap drain in there but otherwise it's pretty much guaranteed so a pretty crazy potential taunt loop there basically but it will be obviously only 60 percent chance but there should obviously be a character more often than not taunted because of this passive now if you look at the first upgrade here at grade one it's the first half of inspired endurance when a rejuvenate triggers all other teammates get bonus hp equal to 12.5 percent of this fighter's max hp like i said we'll look at how this is going to work when we look move on to the special skill at grade two we get the first half of spirit 10 percent of all healing performed by this fighter also granted as bonus hp and then at grade three we get the second half of inspired endurance where it goes up to 25% of this max H uh, this character's max HP is given as bonus HP when his specialist skill actually triggers. When we move on to grades 4 and 5, at grade 4 we get the first half of Survivor's Dexterity, where there's 40% Danger Resistance and 40% Impair Resistance. At grade 5, it's the first half of Determined Decoy. At the start of each turn, 20% chance with equal odds to either taunt a random enemy, taunt a line of enemies, or taunt all enemies for one turn i'd say this is probably his main passive the kind of one that is bringing a lot of attention to him and it can potentially be very very beneficial as well because it can remove effectively a turn from the entire enemy team and teamed up with someone like yumiko who i think punishes or removes focus from the enemy team could be really good and then if we look at the limit break upgrades you can see at limit break one we have spirit two come in where 10 percent of all healing performed by this fighter also granted as bonus hp at limit break two we get the second half of survivor's dexterity where it goes up to 80 percent resistance for days and impair which is obviously great and at limit break three determined decoy two comes in making it a total of 60 percent chance with equal odds to either taunt a random enemy taunt a random line of enemies or taunt all enemies for one turn so this is obviously pretty nice it says with equal odds so you'd say like if it did proc which is 60 percent chance it would then be 33.33 percent chance of either of these three things happening and from my test the entire team was getting taunted more often than i was actually seeing at like one or two for when i was doing clips before so it does seem pretty balanced honestly and like i said taunting the entire team is very very nice when it happens for you when it happens against you not so much um, but this is kelly's passives they work quite well for his kit i like the resistances in there didn't really get to look at those but obviously how they work they're basically going to replace the need to have the mods and you can get extra mods in there so you can have stun and confuse resist in there as well and he's he's absolutely layered you'd have four big resists and it'd almost be like a resilient specialist the old school resilient specialist because he can be reduced down to lower than 60 percent on his resist but otherwise pretty nice let's check out how it works in combination with that specialist skill because there is one here that we haven't really got a good grasp of of how it works now I have previewed this specialist skill before and it is rejuvenate. When this fighter takes critical hit damage, reduce that damage by 50% and regain 25% max bonus HP. But when that happens, of course, he will also give bonus HP to his entire team based on 25% of his max HP. So if he's got 100,000 max HP, he should be giving everyone 25,000 bonus HP. And this is with every hit. So if he gets hit multiple times, this can prop multiple times in a turn, which would obviously be brutal. You could effectively give an entire team 100% bonus HP if you had someone have like a, a four hit signature move or something like that. There are characters out there that have four hit rushes, four hit signature moves. You've got to try and hit Kelly hard enough that this can't proc. But he's still going to be reducing that damage by 50% anyway. So it's really, really powerful. And like I said, when I first previewed this, I'm going to see if this stacks with a weapon that... Um, obviously does reduce crit damage by 50% as well and uh, let's try and do that all in one video now i realized i couldn't do it all in one clip so i'm gonna have to do two separate clips to see if it stacks so as you can see no one's got bonus hp right now i removed nor so there's no bonus hp for the entire team when i hit a crit on him he obviously gets the 25% of his um max hp as bonus hp but also his teammates do too and that's with every single crit that you can see and it's 25% of his max HP. So if he has very high max HP, which he will have because he has good base HP, he effectively will be giving other characters, generally speaking, more than 25% of their max HP as bonus HP. 
So if he's got 150k and someone's got 100k, 25% of his is 37.5k, and whereas 25% of theirs is 25k. So they'll be getting slightly more, and that's why some of these characters have effectively gone to 100% bonus HP, just because the base HP of Kelly is just so high. Now the weapon I'm going to put in his hands is going to be this one. I just basically upgraded a weapon to 5 star and put on the reduced critical hit damage taken by 50% in the last slot. And the reason I did it on a weapon this bad is because I'm also going to use a weapon that's exactly the same, the exact same as Ezekiel shotgun, but that doesn't have this. And then I'll, I'll basically be able to see if it isn't having the desired effect of damage reduction. So I'll do like 10 attacks with the same character with the, with the weapon that doesn't have this, which is this weapon right here. Same weapon, 15% attack, 15% HP, and attack based on the enemy's HP. And I'll just do restart the fight, and then I'll tell you whether it is actually having an enhanced reduction on the actual crit damage that he's taken. Okay, so I'll start the fight, and I'll do basically the attacks I have been doing. And the damage Kelly's been taking from Clementine's basic attack has between been between 8.7 and 9.3k damage so it should be obvious if it's giving getting further reduced because of the weapon and it definitely is it got further reduced because of the weapon so the initial reduction is going to come in from his passive then it's going to get a 50 percent again because it's going down to 4k so that's massive damage reduction when it comes to um the amount of damage kenny's uh, sorry kelly's going to take from critical attacks now moving on to Kelly's weapon, he does not have an attached weapon, but that 50% crit damage does seem like a good option. They could potentially bring out a further reduction in crit damage that would obviously be even more reduction. It could be like a 75% further reduction because I don't think they're adding it together. It doesn't look like it's being added together. It looks like one reduction's coming in and then the other reduction afterwards. So that could actually be pretty nice indeed. We'll have to see what happens there that potentially they'll bring out even if it's only a 50% reduction with just better base stats because the ones you can craft are not going to be as high but that would be a good weapon to put in his hands just to re further reduce the damage he's going to take from crit attacks now he could work in a team that already reduces damage taken from like adrenaline rushes for instance and it's all stacked together It'd be very very hard to do damage against Kelly for sure, or like significant damage. And that would be very nice for Kelly and him on your defense team. And that was just a preview of Gold Mythic Defender Kelly, who is going to be coming to the game, as I said, as an advanced token world recruit. I believe he's meant to be coming out after war ends on Sunday, so stay tuned for that. But it could be Monday. Just obviously stay tuned for the release of the character. Scopely will update you on Discord. And maybe my video will be attached in that video uh, in that blog post as well. You can re-watch the video if you have already seen it. Um, but I do appreciate you tuning into this video, guys. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Take care. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.